Before I even get started with this video, I'm just gonna throw this out here right now. I know there's gonna be some a-hole who's gonna go in my comments and go, why are you talking about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom now? That movie came out two weeks ago. You're late. This is late. This review is late. I don't care. The movie is still in theaters. It's still out there. It's still relevant. I'm allowed to talk about it. So I just got to see it, okay? It took me a while. Plus, who cares? If you want to see my thoughts about it, then here it is. Freaking Last Jedi came out last December. There's still people making a bunch of damn videos about that. So if they can make those videos, I'm allowed to make a video about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom two weeks late. So deal with it. If you don't got a problem with that, leave. I'm already losing subscribers and viewers anyway, so what's one more gonna do? Did this get too real? I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Andre. I'm a black nerd. I want to talk about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom because why are we not talking about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? I have got some stuff to say about this movie. <laughs> oh my God. I'm letting you know right now, this is a spoiler heavy talk. So if you have not seen the movie, you don't want to be spoiled. This is not the video for you because I am deep diving because I got to let y'all know how I feel about this stuff with this movie. <laughs> Oh my God. First off, love the opening sequence. That, that whole part where they go back to the island a few months after the events of the first Jurassic World because they're trying to collect some stuff and try to collect that DNA so you know that someone's up to some nefarious scheme. But of course that T-Rex is just walking by going, mmm, lunch. And I loved <laughs> the, 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 this guy runs away and that T-Rex is trying to get him so hard and he like gets away and he's like, ah, I'm good, I'm good. But he's right over that water. And you know who's in that water? My new favorite dinosaur. Like, I love the T-Rex. I love the raptors. But I'm sorry. I think my new favorite dinosaur is that water dinosaur that just keeps coming out of nowhere. And because he he's got good timing. He just knows when to show up. Like when those guys are driving around in that little dive bubble thing, he's like around. But they're like, we can't find him. And then you just see his mouth opening up behind them. And then this guy's, oh, <laughs> this guy's on a ladder. He's about to get into this plane. And that. Water dinosaur was like, no, be -op. <laughs> I love that dinosaur. So we catch up with Claire, Bryce Dallas Howard. She's still wearing them heels, but then eventually she changed her shoes. In case you were concerned, she does not wear heels the entire time in the movie. I know there's a lot of people who had huge discussions about Bryce Dallas Howard's feet <laughs> and what she's putting on them from the last movie. Her wiki feet page must be huge right now. But she's running this like dinosaur prevention, saving the dinosaurs campaign trying to get all the congress people and, and everyone to be like no we should preserve the dinosaurs because they're an endangered species and you're like no they even bring jeff goldblum back to play his part again as ian malcolm to be up in the courtroom like uh no 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 these dinosaurs need, need, need to die they just are not good they're not supposed to be here humans and, and, and dinosaurs should not coexist this was man-made we, we, we play god let's stop uh, 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 it's chaos theory. That was the worst Jeff Goldblum impression, but you got what I'm saying. He's like, don't do this. James Cromwell as Lockwood. You remember Hammond from the first movie? Lockwood was basically his former partner. They used to be working together on this whole cloning dinosaur thing, had a little falling out, which I will get to later, uh, and therefore he's separate, but Lockwood's like, no, we really gotta save those dinosaurs. So he has this assistant who's like, I'm here to help you out. This is what we need you to do. We need you to go get these dinosaurs, 10 different species, specifically gotta get Blue, because he's apparently the last Velociraptor. And the whole time you're hearing this dude talk, you're like, you're the villain. You're the villain. You're the villain. Why are you even acting like you're not the villain? We all know that you're gonna turn into some shady, evil businessman by the end of this. You're probably gonna sell the dinosaurs. Why are you even acting like you're on their side? Now, I'll be real with you. Getting everyone to the island is contrived as possible. You got Lockwood calling up this assistant that then called up Claire to be like, hey, we need to go get to these dinosaurs. Oh, you gotta get that Velociraptor blue. There's only one person who can get blue. Of course, that's when you bring Chris Pratt in. And on top of that, let's just have a random volcano on the island and the volcano's gonna explode. So now you gotta get the dinosaurs before they die in the volcano lava. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get you back to that island. But of course they all go back to the island and they bring these two new people uh, because they're like, you know what this movie needs? Uh, diversity. So they brought, <laughs> they bring in, hi, I'm a Latin woman and I got a sarcastic quip every single time someone talks back to me and I'm badass and I'm like, I like you. And then there's his brother. <laughs> Some people might get a little tired of his shtick because he's basically there to be like, oh, I'm scared. Oh, there's dinosaurs. Oh, we gonna die. But if that was me in his place, I'd be like, oh, I'm scared. Oh, there's dinosaurs. Oh, we gonna die. So I respect him. It kind of got a bit too much after a while because just every single time he's just like, like, you know how in cartoons people are like, oh, ghost. That's how he was. But he would be like, oh, T-Rex. I would just wait for him at one point for him to just run and you hear that cartoon sound effect like that. 
<laughs> you know, that's how he was, but that was all right. Hey, dinosaurs are scary, I don't blame them. Can someone just describe to me what the physics of weight of the dinosaurs are? Because these dinosaurs, first off, sometimes they grow and shrink, and then other times they're powerful, and other times they're not. So like, there's times when there's a big dinosaur that's chasing after you, but for some reason when their mouth attacks you, like they attack this dude at one point, and it just grabbed on his pants, and just like snapped his pants, and he like snapped his ankles, and you're just like, dude, that dinosaur has a big mouth. He would have grabbed that whole leg and pulled you down, but no, he's just like, oh, oh, you're up the ladder. Oh, I can't get you. Or there's like a dinosaur about to come out of a door, and a regular person can just be like, no, dinosaur. I just closed the door on you. Okay, dinosaurs can break through glasses and doors, but then you put yourself in a dumb waiter and all of a sudden that thing's made of steel. Literally, there's a part where the Indoraptor cannot get through a dumb waiter, which I'm like, is the dumb waiter? When that door just made of wood, he just knocked down a whole staircase and bust through glass, but now there's like one door. He's like, Arr. I'll get you next time, kid. And this T-Rex, I swear this T-Rex grows and shrinks. Like there's moments when the T-Rex is hovering over people. <laughs> You know, and he's big and loud, except for certain moments where he has to sneak into the shot where he just must be tiptoeing in the background. Like, I just want them one time to just pan away from the dinosaur that we're looking at to the T-Rex who's about to show up in the shot and just have him going, boop, 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 boop. Shh, be very, very quiet. I'm hunting humans. <laughs> and then just like goes in and like snaps at people or dinosaurs. That's what he does. But then you put T-Rex in the cage and he's like, you know, a, a large pet. Like he's Clifford, the big red dog. <laughs> like what is your size? Hey, there's a stampede of dinosaurs. But if we stand in this one spot, apparently no dinosaur will hit this one spot that we just randomly all happen to stand at. Oh, Chris Pratt gets a uh, hit with a tranquilizer dart and lava's coming near him. So he can just like flip his body. <laughs> <laughs> like he's, he's like doing like this. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, man. Why are people not talking about this movie? So of course, the guy that sends the people off to get the dinosaurs, they send this whole military group. Of course, they're evil. Of course, they betray everybody. They, you betrayed me. These soldiers, they always betray me. You got this one military guy who's just a walking cliche, even down to taking a dinosaur's tooth every time he grabs one. But the military, they get all the dinosaurs, they get them on a boat. Uh, the other guys that were left behind get on the boat through a flying Jeep. You just have to see it. Jeep just like flies in the air and lands right into the into the boat. I love this movie. If a lot of this is sounding familiar to you, it should, because it's basically the plot of The Lost World, Jurassic Park 2. This is all the same thing, all the way down to Blue getting hurt and them having to put Blue in a vehicle and working on Blue to get Blue better again. Like, you remember that baby T-Rex that they had to take care of in Lost World? Same stuff, same stuff. But I especially love that they bring out the woman that's, you know, the sarcastic one, or I'm sorry, uh, one time she's referred to by the old military guy as a nasty woman. Gee, I wonder where you got that reference. Hey, look at us, we're Jurassic World, we're hip, we're, we're, we know what's up. I'm surprised no one said that the dinosaurs are lit in this thing. I'm surprised that the Velociraptor didn't dab. But anyway, they're doing this blood transfusion on Blue because Blue got shot by one of the military people and the woman's like, hey, uh, so we're gonna have to get some blood from a dinosaur. And she's like labeling all these characteristics of what the dinosaur has to be in order to have the right blood to, to do the blood transfusion. But of course, it's the T-Rex, cause she's like, oh, it's gotta be a carnivore, and it's gotta have like three toes, and it also has to have a certain level of scales and certain types of teeth, and you're just like, just said they gotta go get the blood from the T-Rex. So of course we gotta have a whole scene where Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard are sneaking around a tranquilized T-Rex to get blood out of it, all the way down to like Chris Pratt flipping forward while the dinosaur's mouth is open, like being able to flip out of the dinosaur's mouth right before it closes down. Star-Lord can't do that. Only Owen from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Maybe we should take the Chris Pratt from Fallen Kingdom, put him in Infinity War, and maybe he would not have messed up when they were fighting Thanos. They do this part where like they turn back to the dinosaurs and it's all the ones that didn't get on the boat and you just see this big giant brontosaurus and then you just see like all the lava and the smoke and he's just like and you just see the smoke covering his face and you can just see like the shadow silhouette of him in the, in the ashes and the, you just hear him go and he's just like oh shoot. I'm crying for this dinosaur, wow! That's the thing about this movie, man. Every time a 
dinosaur dies, I'm all like, oh. But every time a human gets eaten by one, I'm like, yeah, get them dinosaur. They get all these dinosaurs. They bring them back to Lockwood Manor because they're gonna have a secret black market auction. So yeah, there's some straight up dinosaur animal trafficking, where they're gonna auction off the dinosaurs to all these different countries so they can make them weapons, hunt them for sport. I'm pretty sure one of them is gonna have sex with the dinosaur. They never say it in the movie, but you know one of them is going to do that. They're gonna be like, how can I figure out a way to make love to this dinosaur. So they bring in an auctioneer, which is the guy from uh, Captain America, you know, the scientist guy that helped out Red Skull, which, okay, I may be reaching really hard here, and maybe it's just because of all the news and outlets and social media talking about him 24 seven, but was it just me, or was his character kind of like Donald Trump, just in the sense of like, he had this really distinct voice. I'm here to auction the dinosaurs. I hear the dinosaurs are huge. We're gonna bring in different countries. This guy's from Russia. He wants to buy dinosaurs from us. And he had this toupee, right? That was orangish and it like sat like this. And there was even one point where a dinosaur yelled at him and his hair went And I'm like, okay, I think that was supposed to be Trump. Just like in that Godzilla movie, when they had those two guys that looked like they were supposed to be Siskel and Ebert. I'm just saying, and he's little too, so he's like a little Trump, it's like a lump. He's lump, he's lump, he's in my head. So everything up to this point is what I was expecting. So we get to the auction and I'm like, okay, I know what's gonna happen here. Oh, you know, they're gonna stop the auction just in time. None of the dinosaurs are gonna get away. Wrong! And that's when the movie was like, oh shoot, Andre, you thought you knew what was gonna happen, but this is not going to go the way you think! Yeah, man, I mean, they stopped some of the dinosaurs from getting sold off, but it really shows in the movie that some of them did get sold and put in trucks and driven away, so they out there somewhere. Somebody in some country got a dinosaur right now. Also in Lockwood Manor, there's this girl, this girl Maisie. She's this little British girl and she's got this old lady that takes care of her. But they do this whole thing the entire time of like, we can't tell you who your mother is. We can never know who your mother is. And then that's when you find out the reason why Lockwood and Hammond split ways. So Lockwood used the same technology of cloning a dinosaur to clone a child because he had a daughter, lost his daughter in a car accident and grieved and then was like, wait a second, <laughs> we got all this stuff that clones dinosaurs, let me see if I can do something here and basically makes a new child. And so it's the same girl and they show you that because the old lady is taking care of her, they have this picture of that old lady but when she's younger but then the girl that's in the picture with her is that girl but like same age. So she's just like, what's going on? And then it's like, oh yeah, Maisie, you a clone. So she's a clone. They don't say how they did it but I'm just gonna assume right now that she got dinosaur DNA in her and I'm gonna prove that. I got some theories. So auctions going on, of course, like Owen and Claire to get caught by the dude, the, the villain, not Lockwood, but the guy that works under him. So then Claire's like talking to him and he's like, how could you do this? How could you take all these dinosaurs and sell them for profit and use them for war? That's wrong. And then the villain does something where I was like, dude, I don't like you, but you are kind of right right now. Cause he turns over to her and goes, whoa, whoa wait, you mad at me? for taking these dinosaurs and using them to make a profit. Um, I'm sorry, who's the person in the room that made an entire theme park making dinosaurs for profit? Oh, also, who is the one that created the Indominus Rex? Made that specifically to be a theme park attraction because you needed something with more teeth, something scarier for the people coming to the park for profit. So I'm wrong for selling these dinosaurs to the black market when you made a whole theme park making money off of them? You gonna call me bad for making money off of them? Hypocrite. And then Chris Pratt, he's like, oh, wait, wait, son. I ain't done yet. You took a vicious predator, the Velociraptor, and you figured out a way to train and control him. You didn't think for one second that someone was gonna look at that and go, um, we can use that as a weapon now. So it's because of them that he's able to do what he is doing today. And I was just like, damn, got you, son. I love that part. I mean, yes, this dude is a complete villain, but when a villain can ever look to the hero and go, yeah, you effed up too, and that's why I'm not allowed to do what I do, I'm like, that's that's some good stuff right there. You gotta give them props for that. But of course, they figure out through that, uh, whatever, the dinosaur with like the really hard head, he like knocks through a wall, knocks through the gate, and then they let him loose in the freaking auction, and I was crying, because there's this dinosaur with his hard head just run through the crowd, and literally, you just look through the crowd, you just see people going, Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah! And then of course, you know, they had to do something crazy. They had to create their own dinosaur. So they create the Indo Rapper. 
No, not, not the Indo rapper. They, they, they created an Indonesian rapper. They created an Indo raptor, uh, which is part Indominus Rex and part raptor. But I thought the Indominus Rex was already part T Rex and part raptor. So it's like part T Rex, part raptor, and then a little more raptor, like double raptor. Like how you can get a double pepperoni pizza. Or like when some people put the recommended amount of sugar in their Kool Aid and you're like pouring the entire box of sugar into the Kool Aid. Is it like that? This is the cherry Kool-Aid of dinosaurs. I'm sorry, the red Kool-Aid of dinosaurs. Let's keep it real. So it's basically the Indominus Rex, but now the old one is in Rex form. This one's in raptor form. And he's got like this creepy big hand. And every single time that girl walks by, he like slowly puts his hand out trying to grab her. And I'm like, hey, hey, raptor. Like at one point, the girl's in the bed and he's just like, I'm going to get you. He literally climbs in a window to snatch this child up. <laughs> Hide your kids, hide your wife. One complaint I do have about this movie though, there was a lot of times when dinosaurs ate people where they cut away from it. I get it, you've done like what, five of these now? So you might think that we're tired of people getting eaten by dinosaurs and showing it. No, never, show it every time. You know, when like a dude I wanna see get eaten, you like cut away, I'm like, nah man, the scream is nice, ah! but I need to see it. The, the auctioneer guy and like four people in the elevator, they were trying to hide, but then he like pushed somebody out the way so he could hide, and that Indoraptor was like running towards it, and they closed the door, but then the Indoraptor's like, nah, I know how to press buttons now with my tail, and the door opens back up, and it's like, roar, and you're like, eat him, and then they cut away, and I'm like, no, no, you need to cut back and show me that, because yeah, you might have eaten the bad guy, but there's also four other people in there. I want to see a smorgasbord. <laughs> I need to see a buffet. Oh, that Indoraptor though, man. <laughs> there's one point where he's in a cage, right? And that old military guy sees him and he's like, tries to attack him. So the military guy shoots him with tranquilizer darts, right? And <laughs> this Indoraptor is the best actor in this movie. Cause <laughs> he, he like gets shot and he like lays down dead and you're just like, come on dude, we know you're not dead. Why are you messing with him like that? Why are you just toying with him? Cause the Indoraptor, you even look at him, he just all like, gets hit with the darts, he's like, rah, rah, I mean, oh, oh, you got me, Arr. He doesn't talk, but that's pretty much what he feels like. He's like, oh no. And he, there's even one point where he opens his eyes and like looks at us, he's like, ah, you watch this, watch this. So he like moves his tail in the back, the guy looks back and he like looks at us, go like, oh, this is gonna be good. And then the tail <laughs> moves back again, and that guy looks back, and that Indoraptor's like, that's a nice arm. I want that arm. <laughs> Damn, I gotta see this again. Oh, and the diversity team is doing stuff too at the same time. Like they're releasing Blue. Of course, going to that big fight with the Indoraptor. Blue got him good. They got rid of all the buyers. They're all gone. The dinosaurs are out of their cages, but they're stuck in the building and there's this big door that can let them out and they need to be let out because there's this toxic gas that got busted open, a toxic container, and it's about to kill them all. So the dinosaurs, they're gonna die. They're like, Claire, you gotta let them out. We gotta let them out. We can't let these dinosaurs die. And they're like, no, but if you do that, they're gonna pretty much be left out into society. Like they're gonna be in the real world. They're not gonna be on an island on their own. They are there with people. And she's about to press the button to release it. And then she's like, I can't do it. It just wouldn't be right. We've done so much bad. We can't play God anymore, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. You get an evolution of a character because she went from a person working at this park and feel like they need to create all these dinosaurs to them being somebody that's like, we gotta save these dinosaurs to being like, no, this should not happen. Humans and dinosaurs should not coexist. Let's stop this right now. And you're sitting there watching these dinosaurs and you're about to start crying again like, oh no, these dinosaurs are gonna die in this toxic gas. And then that door opens and you're like, oh shoot, who pushed the button? It's like baby plucky duck. I don't push the button, you push the button. I don't push the button, you push the button. And everyone's looking at everybody and they turn around. Guess who pushed that button? That freaking clone child, Maisie, who I don't trust her, because there's even one shot where they look at her close up, it's like her eyes, and you just hear that music, bum, 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 bum. I'm like, oh shoot, is she part raptor? She's probably like part child, part raptor. But she lets him out because she's like, well, I was made in the lab, they were made in the lab, so if I get to stay alive, they gotta stay alive too. So she opens up the door, all these dinosaurs run out into the world, and then Chris Pratt looks at Blue and he's like, hey, come on, girl, you know, I know you, we go back, you gotta stay with me, okay? And Blue looks at Chris Pratt, then Blue looks at that cage that they put her in to bring her over here, and looks back at Pratt and like, nah, I'm good, son, and just <laughs> runs off into the distance. <laughs>
All the dinosaurs run out. The main bad guy is out there as his stampede happens. And he's looking around trying to grab that Indominus Rex DNA so he can make some more dinosaurs. And there's a dinosaur in the back, right? That's looking at him. And you're like, oh, shoot, I see how this is going to go. That dinosaur is going to creep up on him and eat him. And then once again, that sneaky T-Rex is like, be very, very quiet. Because he just comes out of nowhere. He's like, you take it too long, dinosaur in the back. I got this. <laughs> and then the other one's like, give me a piece of that. Split. Lost World reference. Split. <laughs> and then we cut back to Jeff Goldblum. And he's like, uh, this is this is what I want you about. This is not supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. Uh, the, the food chain, the, the hierarchy of power is all changing. So then you see all these different shots of like blue standing atop a hill that's looking over the suburbs. You see the freaking pterodactyls flying around. T-Rex going into a zoo yelling at a lion. And then you see all these shots of military people with the dinosaur DNA and with these giant trucks that obviously have dinosaurs in them. So those weapon dinosaurs are probably going to happen. They even show a shot on the beach where these people are surfing and this one dude falls down and then right in the wave, my baby, <laughs> that freaking <laughs> aquatic dinosaur just like knows his timing so good. He's like, mm, you just fell down. Hey, buddy. And then at the very end, freaking Jeff Goldblum just looks at the camera and is like, welcome. To Jurassic World and I was like oh shoot that's why it's called Jurassic World they bait and switched us that last movie we just thought it was gonna be like oh we just opened up the park and then this one was like oh it's gonna be just Lost World and then the dinosaurs will maybe come over here but then we'll get them back not this time son they don't go back the dinosaurs get free the dinosaurs are out there the dinosaurs are living with us. Power Rangers, Dino Supercharged predicted this. If they literally planned this from the first movie, tr they tricked us into thinking that this was just gonna be some more just Jurassic Park usualness. And then this stuff starts happening now. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. <laughs> no one is safe now. <laughs> you go outside, there could be a dinosaur just waiting for you, like, hmm, what's going on there? You look delicious. And if you didn't think that was true, this movie got an after credit scene. They got up, they pulled a Marvel stinger on us because we go to Vegas. They just do a shot of Vegas. Everyone's partying, having a good time. And then two pterodactyls jump on top of that Eiffel Tower. They literally that the little Eiffel Tower Paris hotel. You see two pterodactyls like just sit down and look down and then cut. And I was like, oh, shoot. So look, if the next movie is just them having to deal with dinosaurs all over the earth, I am ready for it. I've been wanting that for so long, ever since Lost World, when they had the T-Rex come over to San Francisco or whatever, and I was like, oh, this is great. And then they were like, nope, we caught the T-Rex, now he's going back to the island. No, this is what I wanted. And dudes, if this is what's gonna happen, if now the next movie is this, I am ready for it. And it's just crazy how this movie turned me around. I was like, ah, this is all right. This is not a big deal. But by the end of this thing, with Clone Child, who might be part raptor or pirate dinosaur, with dinosaurs now in the, in the world, like everywhere, just like roaming about, and oh my gosh. And now people have the dinosaur DNA and can weaponize it. That I thought was stupid in the, in the last movie. Now I'm like, bring it. <laughs> all about it. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, man. How is no one talking about this? It literally makes me upset. Like for all the people that are still talking about that damn Jedi <laughs> and and people who are still crying over, I don't feel so good, I respect, but how is this not a thing? How is this not just being discussed? I haven't read any reviews or nothing or anything like that, but like the little sprinkles of things I've seen, people are like, oh, it's just the same old, same old. No, the dinosaurs are out there. <laughs> They're gonna get us. There's no reason for me to be super critical of this movie. Like when people are going in like, oh, this old thing. It's like, what did you expect? It's a Jurassic movie. Dinosaurs eat people. Action sequences, the end. So the fact that they added, oh, by the way, and now the dinosaurs are not on the island anymore. They in regular life. You got me. <laughs> Congratulations. This can make the next Jurassic Park movie, next Jurassic World movie, be totally different from anything we've seen before. Finally in this franchise, after five movies deep, they're doing something different than Dinosaurs on Island. Yes, The Lost World had that short period where T-Rex was in the city, but that was short and it was stopped. 
this is a little bit of a bigger situation. This would be like if at the end of Gremlins 2, the Gremlins actually got out of the Clamp Tower and went through New York, which was always an alternate ending I had in my brain. And maybe what will happen when the next Gremlin movie comes out, when they do the Gremlins World reboot. <laughs> Gremlins World. You know there's always that one movie that you just know a lot of people are not gonna agree with you on, but you're like, I don't care. This is how I feel. This is it. This is the one for me. Fallen Kingdom, I'm on the train. And if you wanna ride on the train with me, there's seats available. <laughs> you can join me. Otherwise, if you didn't like it or you thought it was bad, whatever, that's you. You're loud. But I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I wanna see this again. They got me. Oh man. So, there we go. This was fun to talk about. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw here, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, this is not your typical type of review, but I don't want to do your typical type of review because that already exists. This is what I wanted to do. This is what I, how I wanted to talk about this movie, and I felt good about it. So, if you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000, and I cannot wait for the next Jurassic World movie. Don't at me, bro. Uh, uh, chaos theory. <laughs>